You've probably heard of some of these underground organizations on the news or in movies, but little is known about the actual founders. These are 10 Gang Founders of America. MS-13, also known as Mara Salvatrucha, is an organization that was founded in Los Angeles, California by Ernesto Miranda, aka Smokey. Smokey was a former soldier in El Salvador who fled to Los Angeles in hopes to escape the violent civil war that plagued his country. Unfortunately, he found plenty of violence on the streets of LA, specifically in the Mexican neighborhoods. This led to Smokey, alongside other war-hardened immigrants, to form the first version of MS-13, called MSS. It is believed the third S was replaced by the number 13, symbolizing the 13th letter in the alphabet, after forming an alliance with the Mexican Mafia, aka La M, for more protection in prison due to the stronghold they already had. Eventually, Ernesto was deported back to El Salvador, where he seemed to turn his life around becoming a father, studying law, and working to keep kids out of trouble. Unfortunately for him, he was gunned down outside his home shortly after. The Jewish Mob, also known as the Kosher Mafia, is an organization that was founded by Arnold Rothstein, aka The Brain, in the early 1900s when he realized the opportunity in bootlegging liquor during Prohibition. With his main office at Broadway and 49th Street in Manhattan, he was able to accumulate over $10 million, equivalent to $125 million in today's valuation, making him one of the wealthiest gangsters in U.S. history. It wasn't the first time he experienced big money. Growing up, he was the son of wealthy businessman Abraham Rothstein. Since a young age, Arnold developed a gambling habit that led to him allegedly fixing the 1919 World Series. Gambling also led to his death in 1928 when he refused to pay up $320,000 he owed from a high-stakes poker game that he claimed was fixed by the other players. On his deathbed, he refused to help police identify his shooter, telling them in quotes, You stick to your trade and I'll stick to mine. The Black Gangster Disciples is an organization that was founded in the late 60s on the south side of Chicago by Larry Hoover, the leader of the Supreme Gangsters, and David Barksdale, the leader of the Black Disciples. The two formed an alliance after Larry Hoover proposed the idea in efforts to end the senseless violence that plagued the Black community in Chicago. At first, they were able to turn their attention to community outreach programs and legitimate businesses, but that would come to an end when drugs began flooding the streets in the 70s. Some members grew extremely rich and others fell victim to using their own supply. David Barksdale died in 1974 due to kidney failure, leaving Larry Hoover in charge from behind bars. Larry Hoover had just been sentenced to six life terms for racketeering charges. With the two leaders off the streets, the organization began feuding with each other. Up until now, there seems to be a rivalry between what was once a strong alliance. BMF also known as the Black Mafia Family, was an organization that was founded in Detroit in the late 80s by Demetrius Flannery, aka Big Meech, alongside his brother Terry. By the year 2000, they had a direct link to the Mexican cartels, which helped establish a quarter billion dollar coke distribution empire throughout the US. The feds claimed that they had two main hubs, one in Atlanta for distribution, ran by Big Meech, and one in Los Angeles for incoming shipments from Mexico, ran by Brother Terry. Around this time, Big Meech had established BMF Entertainment, a promotion agency in efforts to legitimize their source of income. The business front allowed Big Meech to launder illegal earnings by funding legitimate events associating with high-profile hip-hop artists like T.I., Fabulous, Jay-Z, and more. Big Meech being in the limelight and flexing his wealth caused a fallout between the two brothers. His brother Terry was claiming that Meech was attracting the wrong attention, but by 2005, the feds had 900 pages of wiretap conversations which led to the indictment of both brothers. Both ended up pleading guilty and were sentenced to 30 years in prison. The Trinitarios, 
named after three revolutionaries of the Dominican War of Independence, is an organization founded in the early 90s in New York by Leonidas Sierra, a.k.a. Junito, alongside Julio Marine, a.k.a. Caballo. Junito created the organization within Rikers Island Jail, comprised of Dominican descendants to protect themselves from other ruthless inmates. Eventually, when members were being released from jail, the organization began gaining power in the streets of New York. That led to Junito establishing a central committee that conveyed orders and messages to the street leaders. For years, Junito would greenlight hits on oppositions in the streets and in the prison system, all from behind bars. In 2009, as part of Operation Patria, the feds charged at least 147 members in an attempt to dismantle the organization. Then in 2014, founder Junito was sentenced to 19 years for racketeering, which would run consecutively with his 22 years to life sentence he was already serving. Latin Kings is one of the oldest and largest Latino street organizations that was founded in 1954 on the west side of Chicago by Raymond Santos, aka Papa King. Papa King, a Cuban raised in Puerto Rico, first founded a three-boy club called the Imperials to defend themselves against the Italians and Greeks that were oppressing Puerto Ricans at the time. But it wasn't until they merged with a group of Mexican youths called the Mark Kings that they would gain notoriety in Chicago. In 1964, King Papo and White Sal, the leader of the Mark Kings, officially became one organization and birthed the name Latin Kings. They felt it needed to be done so they could bring an end to the oppression of all Latinos. Eventually, the organization, like many others, joined the drug trade in the 70s for funding as well as using. Due to the heavy use, the organization created a constitution of rules, one being a zero tolerance for hard substances. By 1972, founder King Bapo stepped down as leader and in the summer of 1988, he had disappeared, with rumors that he had either fled the country or that there was an internal hit on his life. Neither was confirmed. The Gambino family, originally called the Di Aquila family, was founded in 1910 by Salvatore Di Aquila in East Harlem, New York. Salvatore was a Sicilian immigrant that arrived in the U.S. in 1906. He soon joined and rose the ranks in the Morello family. But in 1910, his boss Giuseppe Morello was sentenced to 10 years in prison, allowing Salvatore to separate himself and start his own organization, naming it after himself. Operating in East Harlem and the Bronx, he rivaled the same family he was once captain in. He even put a hit out on his ex-boss Giuseppe when he was released from prison in 1925. But three years later, in 1928, Salvatore was gunned down in an alleyway in Manhattan. It wasn't until the sixth boss of this same organization that they adopted the name Gambino family after Carlo Gambino's rise in 1957. It's believed that his name is the one that stuck out of 11 total bosses throughout history because he was able to merge two families for the first time and also earn the family over $500 million a year in today's valuation, as well as never receiving a hit on his life during his 19-year run. The Mexican Mafia, also known as La M, is an organization that was founded in 1957 by Luis Flores, aka Huero Buff, alongside 13 other Hispanic street members from different sets in Los Angeles. Flores was able to form a truce and get these 13 OGs from opposing sets to put aside their differences to form the Mexican Mafia while locked up in the Deo Vocational Institution. He found this necessary for protection against opposing threats and also to have complete control of the black market. He was able to accomplish just that by recruiting the most elite individuals to cement the organization's authority overall. By 1961, the organization's power was so overwhelming that the State Department of Corrections decided to transfer some core members to adult facilities like San Quentin Prison. With direct connections to Mexican cartels and Mexican mafia leaders like Rodolfo Cadena frontlining in new facilities, the organization had a monopoly throughout the state. Eventually, they had members from every Hispanic set join the family and even formed an alliance with the Aryan Brotherhood. 
Real quick, I want to say that I now have shirts, hoodies, phone cases, and more for anyone that wants a piece of Time Watch 5 or simply just wants to support the channel. I'll leave a link in the description. Now back to the video. The Crips is an organization that was founded in the late 60s in Los Angeles by Raymond Washington. As a kid, Washington joined a gang called the Avenues in East LA but ended up leaving due to the static between himself and the leader's brother. He then founded his own set called the Baby Avenues, recruiting young kids from South Central LA. Later on, he rebranded the growing set into the Crips, derived from his brother Reggie Washington's nickname. With a growing reputation as one of the best fist fighters in South Central, he was able to influence smaller sets to join the Crips and become subgroups. In 1971, Washington approached another gang leader named Stanley Williams, aka Tookie, in the high school they were both attending. He had heard about Tookie because he had a big reputation for fighting larger, more established gangs. Washington proposed they form a confederation to form a single, large organization under the Crip brand. Tucky accepted the offer and united the West and the East, making the Crips the largest street gang in Los Angeles. Years later, Washington was gunned down at the age of 25, and in 2005, Tucky Williams received a lethal injection in San Quentin State Prison for a quadruple homicide. First, I would like to mention that the man you see on the thumbnail did not start the first blood set. What he did start was the United Blood Nation, and I'll get more into that later. So no one man is credited as founder of the Bloods because it was created as a breakaway group from a bigger organization, the Crips. In 1969, the Crips were becoming the most dominant organization in Los Angeles and were absorbing smaller surrounding sets, one of them being the Pyrus. It wasn't until opposing smaller sets grew tired of being victimized for not joining the Crips that the Pyrus broke away and formed a new alliance with sets like the Brims, Luder Park Hustlers, Denver Lanes, and the Bishops. This new alliance addressed each other as Bloods and gained notoriety for offering protection against the dominant Crips. Now the UBN, also known as the United Blood Nation, is an organization that was founded in 1993 inside of Rikers Island Jail by Omar Porti, aka OG Mac, alongside Leonard McKenzie. The UBN was created for protection from Latino gangs like the Nietas and the Latin Kings that were oppressing non-Latino members. Shortly after, they would form subsets, including the Nine Trey Gangsters and many more. In 1999, OG Mac was released and back on the streets of New York, where he would build the UBN into a much more powerful organization. But only three years after his release, he caught 10 new charges, including racketeering, and was sentenced to 50 years in prison. 